Hi, and welcome to my quick guide of the quest One Small Favor. The quest requirements are Ruined Mysteries and Shallow Village, and the stat requirements are 18 Herblore, 25 Crafting, 30 Smithing, and 36 Agility. For the required items are a Bronze, Iron, and 4 Steel Bars, 2 Guam Herbs, 1 Marantil, 1 Herolander, a Chisel, a Hammer, a Empty Pot, as well as an Empty Teacup, a bowl of hot or cold water, approximately 4000 GP, and one empty inventory slot. For the recommended items are a lot of stamina potions, I think four might be enough, as well as some weight reducing armor since we need to run for about 45 minutes during this quest. And then also some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill a combat 92, where there is a safe spot available for mages and archers. And also some food, armor, weapon and potions to kill a combat 44, 48 and 49 without a safe spot in multi-combat. Now you could use safe spots but then you will need to have like a lot of alts and time. For the teleports, those are a bunch. Most of them aren't really needed but they are just helpful to speed things up. So I'm gonna start with one teleportation method to port Serum. 3 to Drainer, once again I will be using my Emmet of Glory. 1 teleports to the big Lumbridge chicken farm on the eastern side of River Lum. I will be using a Chronicle, you could also use a Combat Bracelet. 4 teleports to Varak. 2 to Barbarian Village, I will be using the Cooking Guild teleport. 2 teleports to the Dwarven Mine, I will be using the Skill Necklace once again, but then to the Mining Guild. If you already have completed the quest Desert Treasure, then buying a lesser teleport from Grand Exchange will be much faster. One teleport to Taverly, and two if you have access to Scrolls of Redirection. Five to Camelot, two to the Fishing Guild, once again, Skills Necklace, two to Ardoin, two to the Fishing Trawler, and then one to Rance. I will be using the Fairy Ring. And then also one after the quest is completed. So this intro was quite long, be sure that you have one empty inventory slot. And let's go to the quest start, which is here in the antique shop of Shallow Village, next to the gem mine. Let's talk to Yanni and select option 2, 5 and then 1. Next, let's go and exit Shallow Village through the wooden gates. And let's start completing this one simple small favor. So, once you've jumped over the broken cart, let's go a bit southwest and there you should find a jungle forester. Let's talk to her and select option 1 twice. Next, once you have the blunt axe, we will need to go to Port Serum, so let's teleport there. And in Port Serum, we will need to talk to Brian, who is the owner of the battle axe shop. The Battle Axe shop is located just west of the pub, on the northern side of Port Serum. So, once we are here at the Battle Axe shop, let's talk to Brian and select option 3, 2 and then 4. Next, we will need to go to Drainer, so let's teleport back to Drainer and let's talk to Aggie the Witch. She is commonly used in quests, so let's talk to her and select option 2, 3 and then 2. Next, let's run east and we'll now need to go to the ham hideout. 
There we will need to talk to Johannes, who is the kind of a leader of the ham, I think. Or at least someone who pulls the strings there. Alright, once you are inside of the hang, the ham hideout, let's go to the southeastern part, to the southeastern cavern, open the door, and there should find near the fire, Johan has Ulbricht. Let's talk to him and select option 4, 3, and then 2. After skipping through this dialogue, let's exit by running once again. I will now need to go to Fred the Farmer. Once you've climbed up the ladder, Fred the Farmer is located just simply north. So here at the pond, just go a bit east and there you'll find Fred Farmer's house. Let's talk to him and select option 3. Next, let's go further east and we'll now need to go to the big chicken farm on the eastern side of River Lum. This is where Seth Groats is located. Fred the Farmer doesn't have enough chickens to release Jimmy, so let's ask Seth Groats. So here at the bigger chicken farm, let's talk to Seth Groats and select option 2. Next, if you would have a bowl of cold water, then use it on the cooking pot right now so you can have a bowl of hot water and then use it on an empty teacup and then you may drop your bowl. We now need to have a cup of hot water. Next, let's teleport to Varak. I will now need to talk to Horvik, just northeast of the Varak Square. Here at the Anvil sign, let's talk to Horvik and select option uh, 3 and then 2. Next, we will need to go to the Apothecary, so let's go southwest. The southwestern part of Varak, there is where the Apothecary is located. Just north of the Black Arms Gang. So let's talk to the Apothecary and select option 2, twice. Next, let's teleport or run to Barbarian Village. I will be teleporting to the Cooking Guild and then just simply running west to Barbarian Village. Inside Barbarian Village, we will need to enter the most southern building. That is the one with the anvil and the Padre sign. Let's talk to Tessie and select option 1. Next, we will need to go to the Dwarven Mine. Either just run northwest and enter it that way, 
or use the skill necklace and go to the mining guild. I think running could be faster if you do not have the 48 agility requirement. If you've also teleported to the mining guild, then just simply run north to the dwarven mine. Squeeze through the crevice if you have the level 48, I think. It's 42 only. And just run to Hammer Spike in the most western room. Once you've passed the anvil, just keep running west until the until the dead end, and there you should find Hammer Spike's gang. Let's talk to Hammer Spike and select option four and then two. Next, we will need to go to Taverly. Since I don't have Nightmare Zone points nor 10 construction, I will be running to Taverly from Valador. We will now need to go to Sandview from the Druidic Ritual quest, as well as the Eggdegar's Ruse quest start. So, on the second floor of the Herbler shop, let's talk to Sandview, select option 2, 2, 3, and then 1. And after this long conversation is over, you're now able to make Guthix rest tea. To do this, you will need to have a cup of hot water. Add your Herolander, then Marantil, and then two Guam herbs to the tea mix, and you have created Guthix rest tea. Next, let's go downstairs, and we'll now need to go to the top of White Wolf Mountain, just a bit west. On the top of White Wolf Mountain, there you should find a gnome and a gnome glider. We will need to deliver this Gothic Rest to that gnome. Alright, let's talk to Gnome Captain let's talk to Captain Blee Match and select option two and then four. Next, let's continue running south and let's get off the mountain. Oh wait no, let's teleport to Camelot. I think that is way faster and then just simply run to Catherby. South of the Catherby bank, there should find a general store sign. We will need to talk to Arheim and select option 4 and then 1. Arheim, 4-1. Alright, let's do this and let's teleport once again to Camelot and let's now run west into Sears Village. We will now need to go to the building just west of the garlic spawn, which is south, a little bit southwest of the elemental workshop. There with the water sign, let's enter that building and there should find a seer with a difficult name, Farsight. Let's talk to him and select option 4, 5 and then 1.
Next, we will need to go to the fishing guild. So, let's teleport to fishing guild. And next to the fishing guild, they should find a dungeon sign. Enter this goblin cage. Let's enter this goblin cave. And then go north. Keep running north until you see a cavern in the northeastern corner. Enter it and you should see a cutscene. There you should find a sculpture. Once you right click on it, select the search option. Then click to continue and teleport to Ardoin. Then let's go northeast and let's go to the blue building. To the wizard of the tribal totem quest. Let's talk to him. Ah, fuck. Let's talk to him and select option 4 and then 2. Next, we will need to go to Port Cazard, and that is the place where you can do Fishing Trawler. Alright, let's teleport to Fishing Trawler, and there you should find Tyndall Merchant on the southern dock. Alright, let's talk to the Tyndall Merchant. And select option 2 and then 1. Alright, next we'll need to go to Rance. So let's teleport to the Faring AKS or the Feldip Hills teleport scroll or a dual ring or just simply run south to Rance. Oh, AKS. Nice. Alright, once you've made it to Rance, let's talk to him and select option 2 and then 4. Next, let's run west and keep, keep running west until you see a transportation sign where there is a gnome glider. Once we have reached the gnome glider, that will be the final point of our favor trip and afterwards we can do this whole thing backwards. So here at the Gnome Glider, let's talk to uh, the Gnome and select option 4 and then 1. Next, here in front of the Gnome Glider, they'll find some Gnome stands. Simply left click on them to search and you should find a gem. Use your chisel on it to cut it and then put it back. Do this 7 more times. But the six other ones, you are able to crush them. If you would crush them, then just talk to the gnome. Select option 4. And for 500 GP, yes, okay. And you'll buy one more. Try again and put it into the light stand. Do this with all of them. Oh my god. Bitch, stop, go away. Oh my god. Are you serious?
Oh my god, dude. I'm losing my money here. Great, now I have 100 GP. Not enough. Alright, once you've finally fixed all of these landing lights, let's talk to the gnome and select option 4. And this should trigger a short cutscene. After the cutscene is over, let's return to Rance. Let's do everything that we have just done, but then backwards. Right, let's talk to Rance and select option 2. Next, we'll need to go back to Port Kazard to the fishing trawler. So, I will be using my Ardoin cloak. And let's go give this comfy mattress to the Tyndall merchant. Right, so let's talk to Tyndall Merchant and select option 2. Next, let's teleport to Ardoin and let's give this Iron Oxide to Wizard Comperty. Talk to the Wizard and select option 4. Next, let's go west and we'll now need to go to the Ardoin Western Bank. And just south of the bank, there should find some pigeon cages behind a house. We will need to grab five of those cages. One, two, three, four, and five. Next, let's go to the bank. And prepare to fight the combat 92 with an available save spot and also that monster has a max hit of 13. You may deposit your pigeon cages, we don't need them until we reach the rock. You may also deposit your chisel, we are done with the crafting. And aside from that we don't really need anything else so let's prepare for the first boss fight. Yeah, that's all I really need. So, let's run north or teleport to the fishing guild. And let's now return to where you found the sculpture in the goblin cave. So here in the eastern northeastern cavern, let's stand in front of the sculpture and then read by clicking on the animate rock scroll and then immediately run to the northeastern corner. That will be your safe spot. There we go. I'm gonna be using I don't even F35 magic. So I brought these for nothing. Alright, fire strike it is.
Alright, once Slagilith has been defeated, let's pick up your loot if you want to. Let's stand in front of the sculpture once again, read the animate rock scroll, and this time you will actually hit the damn thing. Let's skip through the dialogue until she's gone, and let's now teleport to Camelot, and let's return to Farsight the Seer to see what we'll need to do next. By the way, you can also just quickly go to the bank to deposit your loot as well as maybe your archery or mage stuff. Right, let's go. So here, just south of the Elemental Workshop, let's talk to Farsight. Select option 4, 4, 2, 2, and then 1. A weather vane. Let's right click and search it. Next, use your hammer on it. Click to continue. Search it once again to find three parts. Next, let's teleport to any anvil to use these three items on it. You could, for example, teleport to Vrak and use Horvik's anvils, or you could just simply go back downstairs and use the ones in the elemental workshop. Let's use them on any anvil to fix them. Once you have fixed the three parts, let's return to the weather vane. Once you've returned to the weather vane, use all three parts on the thing. And let's now report this to forecast to finally get the weather forecast. Yes, I want to quit. Let's talk to foresight and select option four. Next, let's go deliver this to Arheim in Catherby, south of the bank. Let's talk to Arheim and select option 4. Next, let's go to the bank to prepare to fight the three monsters of Comet 48 in multi-combat and if you don't use alts, then it will also be without any safe zones. What we can bank right now is our agility potions and our animate rock scroll, we don't need them anymore. We do need the herbal tincture, we don't need the hammer anymore, we should need our pot, our 1600 GP and that should be about it, so let's prepare for the second boss fight. Yeah. Alright, once you think you are prepared, let's go back east and let's return to the top of White Wolf Mountain. Thank you. 
Here on the top of White Wolf Mountain, let's talk to the gnome and select option 2. Next, let's run to Taverly and report this to Sandview. Alright, upstairs the Herblor shop, let's talk to Sanfu and select option 2. Next, we'll now need to go back to Hammerstout in the Dwarven Mine, so once again I will be using a Mining Guild Teleport and simply running north. Alright, once you've made it back to Hammerspike's gang, let's talk to Hammerspike twice. Talk to him once again, and then all the gang members will start attacking you. Defeat all three of them. And once you've defeated the third and final gang member, let's talk to Spike once again and he will not be bothering Tassie anymore. So let's teleport to Tassie in Barbarian Village. We could also just simply run there and let's tell her the good news. Alright, let's talk to Tassie and she should give you a soft clay. Next, let's use this on the pottery wheel just east and then select number 5, a potlet. Then use this unfire potlet on the pottery oven. And once you've made a potlet, let's teleport to Varrock and give this to the apothecary. So, Apothecary, let's select option 2. Next, let's teleport to Varak one final time. And let's give this Herbal Tincture as well as Breathing Thoughts to Horvik. Oh, we also need to... Also, we need to go quickly go to the bank to grab the 5 Pigeon Cages. So, let's immediately also deposit our heavy armor, if you've brought it along. So, let's grab the five pigeon cages, and that is literally it what we will need. So, let's return to Horvik and deliver these items. So, Horvik, talk to him twice, and twice 
select option three. Since you already have the pigeon cages, he will transform them into chicken cages. So now we will need to run south or just teleport with your chronicle and then run south to Seth Groats. Alright, so let's give these chicken pages, let's give these chicken cages to Seth Groats so he can fill them up. Next, we will need to go back to the ham hideout. I think I'm going to be using a drainer teleport. I think that is faster than running all the way there and then from drainer just a bit east. Alright, once you've returned to the ham hideout, let's talk to Johannes Ulbricht and select option 4. Afterwards, let's teleport to Drainer once again. After this long conversation is over, and let's tell Aggie the good news that Jimmy will be released. So, Augie, select option 2. Alright, next let's return to Brian in the Battle Axe Shop of Port Serum. And be sure to bring along your 1600, no. And let's be sure to bring along your 1800 GP, so... I need 200 more. And let's go to Brian. Alright, let's talk to Brian and select option 3. Alright, next let's go south and let's go to the Charter crew members. I think that is the easiest way to get yourself to Brimhaven. Oh wait, I also have an Ardoin cloak with me. And that's actually quite cheaper. 3rd GP instead of 1600 using these ripoffs. But yeah, let's go to Brimhaven. And then run south. Just east of the fruit tree patch, there should find a card. Click on it and let's travel to Brimhaven. Yeah, there we go. Next, let's go east. Exit Shallow Village through the wooden gauges to deliver the sharpened axe so she can get the redwood locks, red mahogany locks. And then we can finally complete our quest. So Jungle Forester, select option one. Here is your sharpened axe. Please give me the mahogany locks and let's now follow Mosul Ray in front of the broken cart to enter Shallow Village and let's give these locks to Yenny in the antique shop to complete our quest. Be sure to select option 2 by the way. 
So, congratulations, you've completed one small favor quest you are awarded with two quest points. You've now also unlocked the grinder to and from Feldip Hills, as well as two experience lamps which grant 10,000 experience in any skill that is above level 30, a key ring which is used to reduce bank space by just using keys on it, and then the key ring will function as all of the keys that are on the key ring, and also ability to make Guthix rest tea, as well as the ability to craft potlets. And also, you've completed a quest requirement for King Ransom, as well as Swan Song. So, this was a very long, quick guide. But hopefully it has still helped. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.